Hi, I'm Adam McCarthy of SSA Athletics, and this is the top 10 field performances of 2023. If you like our videos, please subscribe to the channel or check out our Facebook pages, hopefully our new Instagram page coming soon, and the website. These performances are based upon the World Athletics 22 Best Performances, Athletics Weekly, as well as other outlets. Note that this is the opinion of Adam McCarthy putting these together. All performances must be in senior competition. So Villa Lagos breaking the under 20s world record at the World Championships to retain her title does not count. At number 10, one small step for Peters, one giant throw for Javelin Kind. Apologies, I have a cold at the moment, so if I sound like Essex answers to the Godfather, that's the reason why. Grenada's Anderson Peter made a statement at the opening Wanda Diamond League meeting of the year, sending his spear out to 93.07 metres in a thrilling battle with Jakob Vadlech of the Czech Republic. Peters went on to enjoy many more javelin duels throughout the year, including at the World Championship where he retained his title. Ranked 9, we have, uh, well, two people. Krauser versus Kovic in Shot Put Duel. Yes, I realise that sounds like a really dodgy movie released straight to DVD. Apologies, I have a cold at the moment, so if I sound like Essex answers to The Godfather, that's the reason why. The men's shot put was one of the most enduring moments from the 2019 World Championship and a rematch between the defending champion Joe Kovacs and the Olympic champion Ryan Krauser. Now Ryan Krauser was expected to win this and win this quite comfortably. However, Joe Kovacs decided that he was not going to allow that to happen. Krauser emerged as a champion in the end, throwing a championship record of 22 Point nine four meters to beat his compatriot just by five centimeters. At number eight, Mutaz Basham at the World Champs. Three is a magic number. The men's high jump competition was one of the most hotly anticipated events at the World Championships in USA. Wu had been absolutely dominating in the world indoors and had carried that over to the world outdoors, making himself both ranked number one and the best high jumper that season. However, Mutaz Basham had been incredibly consistent this year, consistently jumping relatively good heights. Giamarco Tamberi, fellow gold medalist, had not really turned up this season, and the Belarusians weren't able to send a contingent, therefore making Mutaz Basham's chance of winning this very likely. In the competition itself, Mutaz Basham demonstrated this consistency, whereas his opponents floundered, he remained consistent, to win the gold medal. Number seven, Dominant Duplantis defies gravity. Armand Duplantis is, for his, surprisingly for his young age, has already started to create a legacy. At the World Athletics Championships, he won the world title, no big surprise, but had dominated the pole vault for some time now. The Swedish vaulter kept his call at the World Championships and broke his own world record with a stunning 6.21, with clear daylight between him and the bar. The last time out in Doha, the indoor and outdoor world record holder in the event won a silver behind Sam Kendricks of the USA. However, by Tokyo 2020, the now 22-year-old showed his immense class with a gold medal winning performance in Japan. Yet in the world championship, the title had eluded him so far, so he was able to add that medal to his cabinet. At six, Belletic Valetic Valerie Allman breaks meeting record. Long standing rivalry between America's Valerie Allman and Serbia's Sandra Perkovic is often one of the greatest draws in field athletics. Discus thrower Valerie Allman had won seven straight competitions before finishing second at a Diamond League in Oslo, to which she performed very poorly. The competition before that she had won but also performed very poorly. Sandra Perkovic then took a world lead in a competition in which Valerie Arman was not present. Valerie Arman responded to Perkovic by breaking the Paris meeting record with a 68.68 metre throw. Competing amidst a heat wave that affected much of Europe, her mark was half a metre further than that of Croatia's Sandra Perkovic. Halfway through the list now, at number 5. Carrying on with the theme of discus throwing, we look at the women's world champion, China's Feng Bin. And what a surprise world champion she is. The duel was between Valerie Armin and Sandra Perkovic. However, Feng Bin 
decided to throw the cat amongst the pigeons by throwing a 69.12 centimetre throw in her first round. She didn't come anywhere close to this prior, nor close to this in this competition. Sandra Perkovich is hooking it to 68.45, and if this was any other competition with a throw of 68.45, it would have won it, especially as Valerie Arman came in at 68.30 in her third round, but hadn't come close since. The Chinese athlete is living proof that on the right day, the right time, the right conditions, and just being able to feel it right, you might be able to perform one of the world's best throws and win a surprising competition. As a result of Feng Bin's performance, she gets SSA's stamp of surprise performance of the year. At four, Simon Ehammer at Gottis with his incredible leap in the long jump, making a decathlon world record. Now I know what you're thinking, Adam, why is this relevant? Why is this on this list? And if so, why is it so high up the list? Well, Simon E. Hammer leapt to an incredible 8.45 in his first attempt in the long jump at Gottis 2022. Gottis is a classic for multi-eventing. To take the lead in the overall rankings with 2,163 points and record the furthest long jump ever by a decathlete. To put this in perspective, 845 would win you a Diamond League meeting. It could potentially win you a world championship at that d distance. Crazily enough, this was also one of the longest jumps of anyone in 2022. To give you an understanding of how far that jump is, China's Wang Yi Nan won the world championships in Oregon, who won the event on his last jump, won the event in 8.36. Simon E. Hammer came, got the bronze in that event with 8.16. This performance was on the first day of a decathlon, only two hours after they had raced the 100 metres. Decathletes are often seen as the best all-round athletes, and because of their training, they don't necessarily specialise in one area. Therefore, some of the areas may take a hit in overall performance. Yes, there are some athletes like Daphne Skippers who are able to then do from a heptathlon and then go off from their multi-eventings and then decide to specialise in 100 and 200 because they'll be better there. This often leads to a running joke by more specialised athletes inside the track and field community that multi-eventers are the best of the most average athletes. It, which is a misnomer in my opinion because it takes away from the fact that these athletes still work hard and still have above average performances just over 10 events. But likewise, for a multi-eventer to get a performance that would rival a more specialised athlete is unheard of. In the rhetorical bronze medal position, we have Ukraine's Yaroslava Mahuchik. From rock bottom to rebound with a World Indoor Championship. It was not an easy month for Yaroslava Mahuchik. A month prior to the World Indoor Championships, in February, Russia had invaded her home country in a special military operation. With her training base now under siege, she had to flee Ukraine. Accompanied by her training partners and her coach, who is a male, that is an important distinction in the story, because three days later, after the invasion, Ukraine closed the border for men up to the age of 60, as they had to stay at home to fight. She had to undertake a three-day journey of 2,000 kilometers by car from Ukraine through Russian-backed Transnistria into Moldova and finally and eventually reaching Serbia in order to compete in the championships. Whilst in the championship, she received a stiff opposition from Australian high jumper Eleanor Patterson before finally on the last set of jumps, Yaroslava Mahuchik was able to win the competition, edging it out above her. Yaroslava Mahuchik receives this position because of the disruption in her training and the fact that then she, after this competition, had to emigrate to an entirely new country, Hamburg, Germany. Yet she was still able to get the dub in what turned out to be a highly emotional victory. Please note that we are a athletics channel not a political channel, and we would not discuss events further beyond this. We are athletics, not politics. You will never hear any of our opinions on politics and or world affairs. At number two in the silver position, we have her fellow compatriot, Mania Beck Romanchuk. From the pit of despair to unbounded joy, 
Beck Romanchuk took a one giant leap in the space of 24 hours with a triple jump tour de force that earned her very much an emotional first gold medal in Munich 2022 European Athletics Championships. In the long jump final of the World Championships in Oregon, Mania Beck Romanchuk had one of the highest jumps leading in from qualification. She was in second place with a jump of 6.79. However, she failed jump and almost every jump up until the sixth round. In the sixth round, almost all of them jumped further than her in the final rounds, pushing her out from the bronze medal position down to eighth. She did improve on her last jump, jumping a 6.82, However, this was not enough to get her back into the medals again. This final round led her from being a potential medal winner to being no medal at all. And that is the luck of elite competition. But Beck Romanchuk is one of those rare competitors in that she can both specialise in the long jump and the triple jump, which is not often seen, although it has been heard of, in elite athletics. The reason being is that triple jump places a lot of pressure upon the knees therefore greater chance of hard injuries. So do, but doing both long and triple jump is not often seen. Not only that, the training is slightly different for the triple jump. Her fortunes did not change in the triple jump, coming 11th, although her jumps were more consistent. She didn't have many failed jumps. Leaving a disappointing world championships behind her and due to the nature of the post-pandemic competition schedule, Beck Romanchuk was able to win the European Championships, the next major championships straight after the World Championships. And resultantly, she stood a very much different figure from discontinent to over the moon. The long jump in the Munich 2022 European Athletics Championships pretty much followed the World Athletics Championships. She jumped poorly, although was very consistent, and ended up coming fourth where she was in bronze medal position in the last round. It seems history does repeat itself in less than a month. In the long jump competition, in effect the gold medal was won with Beck Romanchuk's opening attempt, which was measured at 1481, a significant improvement on her 2022 European lead of 1459. Not that she was content to rest on that laurel. In round four, she jumped 1480 into a 2.3 meter second headwind and then uncorked a monster 1502 with her next effort, her first venture beyond the magic 15 meter mark. Having been forced to train at Brescia in Italy because of the invasion of her homeland, the emotion came pouring out in the aftermath of her empathic in victory. She also beat many of the people who was vastly better than her at the World Championships in Oregon. Before we reach our number one, I recommend you smash subscribe and check out our Facebook pages both for training as well as for the Athletics Club. We do have an Athletics Club website as well which you might want to do if you're inside the South End region. Okay, let's round up the top nine. And number 10 we had Anderson Peters throw at Doha, Crowley versus Kovacs at number nine in the World Outdoor Championships in Oregon, Duplantis at Oregon, number seven we had Valerie Almond at Paris. We had Feng Bin, discus thrower at number six. And number five was Mondo Duplantis at Oregon. Number four was Simon E. Hammer of Gotchnitz. Then we had Yaroslava Mahucic at number three at, in Serbia, Belgrade. Beck Romanchuk at Munich. And finally for the number one. Our SSA Athletics Field Performance of the Year at number one is Yulimar Rojas at the World Indoor Championships. Rojas won her third World Indoor Triple Jump title with an outright world record of 15.74 metres in Belgrade. Rojas coming out of a highly successful Olympic year, if somewhat of a technically bad performance, see, although she did win gold medal with a world record, so figure that one out. In Tokyo, Rojas struggled with her technique before pull pulling out an absolute banger of the last jump with a highly unusual short step, short hop, massive jump dominant performance. Most athletes are either hop dominant or step dominant. But most of the time, quite a lot of the athletes are what we call neutral. The distance between the hop step and roughly the jump is roughly around about the same relatively. Yulimar in this particular competition in Belgrade was technically consistent throughout the competition. 
utilizing her unusual jump dominant technique, which had been perfected over the winter period. By the last round, Yulimar Rohat was already on the brink of creating even more history, set to become the first athlete to win free world indoor triple jump titles. But that wasn't enough for the Venezuelan jumper. With the final leap of the competition, she soared to a sensational outright world record of 15.74 metres. That's an indoor world record. Some of her previous attempts at the World Athletic Indoor Championships had been close to the board, but this one was different. It was clearly a legal leap as she moved from a hop into a step and a jump, landing in the sand further than she'd ever has before, indoors or out. Throughout this whole entire competition, she was literally a hop, step and jump above everyone else. There was a clear daylight between her and the person who came second. With this competition and victory, she saw herself cement herself as possibly the greatest female field athlete, if not of the whole of track and field, of all time. Some honorary mentions, the coach of the year, Gen Genaldi Zuev, for his athlete's performance in the World Indoors and Outdoors Athletics Championships. I like to think that possibly we will be good coaches or are good coaches, but compared to what this does at an elite level, being able to organize the Ukrainian athletes while at the same time trying to flee the war zone himself is pretty damn amazing. And really, really puts things into perspective what has to be done at an elite level. We could have had on the list Nowicki's hammer throw at Silesia. That's the continental tour not the Silesia Froze classic we could have also had Sandra Perkovich's Munich six historic six gold medal but we thought it was the other performances were probably more deserving to be on this list but guys tell me am I wrong let me know in the comments below what you would have had as the greatest field performance in track and field this year in 2022 if you want to know what the best track performances were this year, click this card. If you want to know what the best field performances were last year, click this end screen here. I'm Adam McCarthy and I will see you, as always, in the next video. Bye.